But what's up guys, welcome back to News Wave. It is April 1st. So as a reminder, when you look around and you see some crazy, hard to believe news, just keep in mind it is April Fool's Day and you'll probably see that quite a bit around the internet. So keep that in mind over the next 24 hours or so. It's gonna be all over the place out there today. Also, a quick reminder, uh, I, I mentioned on Twitter, we will be doing a, a charity stream later on today at noon Eastern time to help raise funds for the COVID-19 uh, relief fund. So uh, if, come on out, we're gonna have some fun. I'll have some people from the Spawncast, a few other guests as well, and we'll kind of hang out, do Q and A and have some fun there. Today, we're gonna go over a few things, which includes Activision well, annoying people once again. It has to do with the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered that came out and some timed exclusivity on that one, a very odd time to do so. Also I wanna talk a little bit about The Outer Worlds that did finally get its release date for the Switch and some information on a patch that will be there day one as well. And then Game Vice is back, I'm not even kidding. They're looking to block Switch imports once again into the US. As always guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure the like button helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below. And we're gonna start today with the rumor reports from yesterday, which were of course the Mario collection as we uh, roll towards the 35th anniversary for Mario. It was all over the internet the other day and it was an interesting way to start this week where we started to find out that apparently Nintendo has plans to remaster several old older 3D Mario games, and we weren't really 100% on how this would go about. Would it be like several digital releases where they'd all be separate prices at like $30 and a 40 and a 60? Well, more information has come out from sources, according to Video Game Chronicles, saying that it will be, at least according to them, a collection, that is what they've been hearing, not separate purchases like I was kind of thinking they might do because Nintendo, you know, Nintendo's going to Nintendo when it comes to some of these older games. So it's cool to hear that we could have a really neat box set, a 35th anniversary. Sure, it might just be one cartridge, but I'm pretty sure they might even do like a big special edition. And that'll be really cool for all of the 3D Mario fans out there. Also, QuakeCon was scheduled to take place in August later this year. And unfortunately, it looks like that is not going to happen as they have canceled it with the current conditions around the world with the virus. It looks like they are just going to forego 2020 for QuakeCon. And they did put out this full statement. And in it, they said, while we don't know the state of the pandemic will be this August, we do know it will not be possible to complete the work and planning with partners, vendors, volunteers, and others that is required to make QuakeCon a success. So that is a shame because I know a lot of people look forward to QuakeCon, but it does bring up the idea that just because an event is like later on in the year, I'm thinking of even like Gamescom, for example, where they're still looking at this and trying to figure out what they're gonna do. Will it be a digital event? Will they just try to make it work? Like overall with this big venue, uh, it comes down to a lot of the planning that leads up to it. And of course now everyone's uh, trying to pretty much stay away from each other and even just stay at home currently. So doing meetings and, and getting things set together with vendors and volunteers, stuff that would have been very, very difficult even without this pandemic right now is basically impossible. Just about. So that is really the thing to think about is the planning stages, especially if you're considering any events that could still happen, might be harder than you think with a lot of the stuff going on in the background. Oh, and we talked about Final Fantasy VII pretty much leaking out there already, breaking street date, but it looks like it's there, there's like no street date for this game. Essentially, if you see it at a store, most likely it's going to be sold to you and that just seems to be the case. It's a free for all out there, okay? Because uh, EB Games Australia posted this on Facebook and they're just selling Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, it's, uh, this says, when in store, please follow social distancing, store capacity, content, all that stuff. And then it, uh, then it does say that you can just pick it up, but do not share game content until April 10th. I'm sure that will go over very, very well. No one will share this online at all. No one, you can trust everyone with it. Yeah, the spoilers are gonna be out there, okay, for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm just letting you know that now. And to be honest, if, if you're in Australia, go pick up Final Fantasy VII Remake. I've also heard some others on Twitter saying that in parts of Europe and it's already out there. So to be honest, if it's if I hear that it's out in the States already, I, I'll take a uh, I'll take a trip to Walmart, obviously to pick up groceries and then, oh, look there, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Well, I gotta grab that, right? And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with The Outer Worlds on the Switch. Now, this seemingly was gonna come out earlier in the year. Maybe it would have already been out 
by now or we would have been coming up on this release date. But of course we had issues going on with the current situation with the virus and the studio just had to shut down for Virtuos. But we do have a new release date for it. They announced it on Twitter. It is coming out June 5th. And I like The Outer Worlds quite a bit. And considering there's really no Fallout game, like there's no Fallout even three, which figure they could have even just moved that or Bethesda's strange right now with this stuff. Uh, the, the fact that there's no Fallout there makes perfect sense for Outer Worlds to come over. They've just been having issues getting it to the Switch, but they are gonna release it physically, which is good news for collectors because originally it was just going to be a code and a box and people were kind of, uh, they're kind of frustrated or at least annoyed with that. I still don't really like that. If I go and pick up a game in the store, I want it to have a cartridge in there. And trust me, I know a lot of times cartridges, you still gotta download like 20 or 25 gigabytes. I'm looking at you, 2K. But the good news here, it sounds like everything will be on the cartridge minus a few things that will be in a day one patch. The day one patch appears to have just fixes overall, high res textures, six gigabytes overall, but it looks like it, it won't have any content that is straight up missing because they couldn't fit it on the cartridge. Now, they also mentioned that the patch will optimize gameplay. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but I'm sure there will be plenty of uh, comparisons maybe by what, what the patch does and what it doesn't so we could fully understand it. And they might even release just full on patch notes as we get closer to its release in June 5th, uh, on June 5th. But if you were, did not play this, I think it's gonna be a good pickup for the Switch. I grabbed it on Game Pass, so I'll probably grab it on the Switch as well because I like the game so much. And to be honest, this is gonna be an interesting one to see on the Switch because visually it was pretty good. Now it wasn't the greatest looking game ever, or anything, but it still was a was a pretty good looking game on the Xbox One X when I played through it, so it could be pretty interesting there. And again, something like a Fallout on the go like this, it would be pretty fun to have. So look forward to it. Uh, June 5th, I, I do recommend picking it up. I think for 60 bucks, it's a great buy. Next up, let's talk about Game Vice and Nintendo. Now, we know Game Vice and we've talked about them for a while because they keep trying to sue Nintendo for Apparently the, the fact that their attachable controller looks very similar and for at least it functions the same as the Joy-Con. Look, look, we've never really figured this one out because it doesn't look that similar to the Joy-Con. I get the idea is, oh, they're detachable controllers, but one is for specifically all types of tablets and phones and the other one is for a proprietary system that that company produces being Nintendo. And we got to the point where even the courts sided with Nintendo on this one and it took years. We, I mean, seriously, we covered this thing since I think it was the beginning of 2018 up until just like a month ago or even a few weeks ago where Game Vice had lost in court. But they decided to appeal that one. I guess they, they haven't had enough of that situation with Nintendo and now, they've decided to go one step further and file another uh, patent infringement lawsuit against Nintendo. This one from some a patent that they had in August, once again, citing their controllers and their functionality. And I, I think you get to a point where it's like, the amount of money that you're spending on these lawsuits versus even what you think you're going to get, it's got to even out or you start to lose money because I can't imagine Game Vice is too happy showing up to court and being told, "Hey, you're you're just you're losing this case because it's it, there's really nothing here to go over." And the fact that they have like really lost this last one, appeal it, and then go even further, they're trying now as they did before, and it, it didn't work then either. So I'm still confused about this one. They're starting to block imports into the U.S. for the Switch and. I mean, the Switch is hard to find right now and they could even be holding some of it up, but I, I feel like most likely they won't be able to stop Nintendo from importing Switch systems into the US based on the history that they've had with their cases, specifically the one that they have lost fairly recently. But to go that far, you're trying to block Switches again, it's like, it might be time to sit down on this one game vice. I think it might be over and maybe move on because this kind of is telling me that game vice probably doesn't sell that many of their, of their devices. And they'd rather try to roll along with patents and basically patent troll Nintendo on this one. But I feel like it's not going to turn out any differently than what we've already seen. And it's going to be a big colossal waste of time and money pretty much on both sides, because Nintendo still has to defend it, but Game Vice is gonna waste quite a bit of money. Nintendo can take the hit, and they have, obviously, Nintendo, Nintendo Ninja lawyers at the ready, but uh, 
weird for Game Vice to continue pursuing this and then even escalating it. Next up, let's talk about Activision as they did finally release the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered campaign. Uh, weird, right? Campaign, I know. But we did find out through the data mining and some of the leaks that the maps from Modern Warfare 2 seemingly are going to just Modern Warfare, and they could even just continue to add maps into that game overall, and it becomes a best of type game with their multiplayer and maps from all over. But the campaign is, um, it didn't go over too well with gamers. See, we're at a time now where a lot of people are inside and hey, this really cool campaign, I liked Modern Warfare 2's campaign a lot, by the way, just dropped, I'm gonna go grab it, unless you have any other system but the PlayStation 4, because yes, Activision announced that it is going to be one month exclusivity for the PlayStation. In fact, if you have it on, even on P, you wanna get on PC maybe? No, you can't do that. The Xbox and PC will be available at the end of April. It appears April 30th is the date those will go live. So for the next month, you'll have to play it on the PlayStation. And if you don't have it, well, you're just gonna have to wait. Now, there were a lot of people who were pretty angry or even upset about this online, but most people probably know this has been going on for a while. Activision shops out exclusivity for DLC on Call of Duty all the time. Like we've been doing this since the 360 days when Microsoft had it, and then it shifted over to PlayStation, probably because before it was really, I mean, those games, those shooters with Call of Duty were played, I, I would say significantly more on the 360 than the PlayStation 3 in the early days, especially. And then obviously when the PlayStation took over the market lead by quite a bit in this past generation, this generation now about to be past generation, uh, that shifted over to the PlayStation 4. So it's not surprising for me to see Sony control something like this for a month. But it is frustrating where a lot of people are inside their homes, they start hearing about this campaign, they get excited because they remember it and they wanna see it remastered, and then here it is, it's only on the PlayStation, you'll just have to wait it out on the other platforms. These are the kind of things that always bug me about Activision seeking these kind of things out because it is a third party company and it's, it is it, like the DLC stuff was always weird to me, but like now you have like a full on game like this locked for 30 days. And look, Microsoft, obviously, Fantasy Star Online 2, right? That is one that they have pretty much just on the Xbox, not even on PC. But that's a game that would not have happened most likely if Microsoft had not gone and got it done. And I say that because Fantasy Star Online 2 has been there forever. Like Nintendo, Sony, somebody could have gone and done that, right? But it was Microsoft who decided to do it. Even Sega wasn't willing to do it themselves. And then we saw Pan's Dragoon, but I don't think people really care about Pan's Dragoon that much because I never really see anyone talk about it now. But it, a big high profile game like this currently being locked to the PlayStation, I see why it's annoying uh, pretty much everyone who wants to play it on another platform, especially on PC. But it's kind of always been like this. So I guess in 30 days, we'll have it unlocked on other platforms. And until then, it's $19.99 on the PlayStation Store available now. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about another release date that we did get. That's for Minecraft Dungeons. And you know what? I I, I looked at this game originally when it was announced and I said, uh, I don't really, okay, sure. Minecraft Dungeon Crawler. All right, that could be neat. And then we started getting more and more gameplay for it. There was a big write-up by Windows Central. And I, I'm looking at this and I'm a bit more interested in it than I thought I would be. I'm actually more interested in the Minecraft in general because I don't really play Minecraft like that at all. So to hear about a dungeon crawler though set in that universe is pretty interesting and it's coming out pretty soon actually. In less than two months, it'll be out May 26th and it's coming to all platforms, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and PC. And I do like to see Mojang do something other than just updating Minecraft over and over again because I, I think this is their like, first standalone game since since Minecraft, right? Uh, so I do like to see them try some other things and while they can still use the Minecraft IP because it's very, very popular and extremely valuable, I like to see something like a dungeon crawler. I think it'd be kind of neat. It's four player co-op and it's gonna be on all platforms. So it should be on Game Pass. My plan is to check it out there, right? Just see how it is and if it's something I would get into. And if it is, maybe I'll grab it on the Switch as well for the portable experience. And maybe we'll get like cross save or cross progression or cross play and all of this stuff and uh, could work out to be a pretty fun game. And if it does well, maybe it continues to get updated significantly like we see Minecraft. But look out for that one, May 26th. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one is from John O saying, this Mario thing is getting my hopes way too high. I'm having to hammer it in that it isn't true. So I don't get disappointed. I'm basically telling myself it'll be like two or three Mario games with a few extra things tacked on like the NES collection games. A new modern remaster of all the old Mario games seems like the best idea 
it ever for re-release, but it also seems like Nintendo just won't do it. So my concern is that it is a very basic port job of the games. I would love to see them do all kinds of stuff to things like Mario Sunshine, maybe smooth out some of that game. I don't know if they're gonna go in and just change things in the game in terms of levels and design, nothing like that. But to do 60 frames, widescreen support, it, it could definitely look like a much better game on like modern, uh, modern TVs. Galaxy looks good on the Wii, but it could look even better on the Switch. So I'm excited about that. Mario 64 might be the most interesting one, by the way, because that looks really good in some emulators, especially with texture packs. And I'm curious if they'll play around with any of that as well. Of course, well, we have to see it first and you know we have to see it actually being real, but getting into some of the, I'm sure, screenshots and gameplay that gets revealed as long as all of this is real, uh, we'll, be, we'll see some people really analyze this stuff. So that'll be exciting. And Here's hoping they really spend some time with this and it's not just a quick kind of cash grab, push it out there in a collection and we'll get 60 bucks easy. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go to here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's Game Vice, once again, bringing these lawsuits to Nintendo for patent infringement, trying to block the Switch from importing into the US. What do you think about that? I, I think it might be time for Game Vice to call it quits on this one. Also, what about the Outer Worlds coming out June 5th on the Switch? If you waited, I do think it's worth the 60 bucks. A lot of stuff to do there. And then what about this timed exclusivity at a very odd time to do it, I would say, uh, by Activision and Sony. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.